Thank you and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Education virtual regular business meeting and workshop this Tuesday, March 8th. Um, may I have a motion, please, to move into executive session? So moved. By Mike, second by Maria. All in favor? Okay, thank you all, and we will be back shortly. Uh, we'll be back at 6 p.m. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, March 8th Board of Education virtual regular business meeting and workshop. Would everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And moving on, can I have a motion, please, to move out of executive session? So moved. That was Jen in a second. By Mike, all in favor? And I'm looking for everybody's hands. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on to um, improve the current agenda. We have our student liaisons in WTA, Joan, with us this evening. Thank you, everybody, trying to check all the boxes and see all your smiling faces. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, if the students would like to go first, I'll let you get, do you want to decide amongst you who would like to lead with your? I don't things? care either way. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Brooke, would you, would you start us off? Sure. Sure. So hello, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. I struggle with zoom. So yeah, <laughs> we can hear you great, Brooke. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, so Michael has a mastermind meet tonight. So he says hello. Um, but starting us off, we've got our sources of strength, Mural Madness. Um, a big push this year at Schrader is our sources of strength program. So a bunch of our clubs and groups of clubs are working together to create murals um, that are reflecting um, different sources of strength. And each club is going to finish them by the end of March, and then we're going to have them displayed um, around um, the building at the end of the month. So that's pretty exciting. Um, then we have some speech and debate um, news. This is considered a rebuilding year in Ms. Ham's own uh, words, who's one of our advisors, and seven students um, qualified for nationals this year, and there's nine league champions. So congrats to our speech and debate team. A story for Mr. Fedor, one of our science teachers. The Friday before February break, uh, Mr. Fedor's astronomy class brought two sheet pizzas down to Mrs. Burgess's and Mr. Marcello's classrooms to spend time with students um, who have disabilities. They showed a PowerPoint and video on space planes and breaking the sound barrier and then broke into groups to make a paper airplanes, which then they had a contest to see um, whose plane would fly the farthest. And this was an awesome way to end the week. Um, some other news. This is Music in Our Schools Month. So Schrader is having some concerts. They have PRISM concerts, which I believe means that each group only performs one piece. So tomorrow night, there's one concert, and it is the symphonic orchestra, the wind ensemble, the choral, the jazz ensemble. And then next Tuesday, um, we have the Philharmonic Orchestra, the symphonic band, the concert band, the select vocal ensemble and the jazz band who are all performing. So good luck to everyone performing. Last Thursday, we had our language honor society induction ceremony. So some of our juniors and seniors who take French, German, and Spanish were inducted into their languages honor society. And one of the cool things about the ceremony was it's pretty much student run by senior leaders, which Michael and I actually got to help out with that, which was a Super fun opportunity. So congratulations to everyone who was inducted. Math League completed our season. We had 30 team members who competed and we earned 147 points, which this was during one of the most arguably challenging meets of the year. And the Math League is having a party to celebrate the season. And then um, Mr. Connolly, if you could show the picture of Harper, 
that would be amazing. Thank you. And then this is the last piece. This is, I think, my favorite thing I've ever presented to the board ever. Thank you. Um, we have um, a story about Harper, the therapy dog. So Mrs. Gadsby, one of our PE teachers, started to bring in her dog, Harper. She's a three-year-old golden doodle. And this started during our mindfulness unit in gym. Harper loves coming to school, being with students and students. We absolutely love seeing Harper. So uh, Mrs. Gadsby and I really wanted to take a second to just thank the board um, for allowing those therapy dogs in school because it's a really special opportunity. So yeah, have a good night. Hey, Paul Conley, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Brooke. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you for your time here despite what happened last month. And let's lean into this new chapter. It's been a week to celebrate championships. This week at Thomas with Brooks being earned by members of the indoor track team and hockey team. Congratulations to the players, coaches, and our athletic department for reaching the pinnacle and good luck as they continue into their state competitions this weekend. Speaking of sports, our boys and girls varsity basketball team finished their season strong, and our spring sports season is kicking into high gear. Sports such as lacrosse, softball, baseball, and outdoor track. We take pride in our Thomas athletes. Going into the arts, the Monroe County School Music Association All County Music Festival will be on Saturday afternoon in Quebec Hall at the Eastman Theater. We are so proud of our talented musicians that were selected by audition to perform at this LA event. Congratulations to Jacob R for earning third place in the so oh, sorry in the SUNY Perdonia Bass String Competition. Um, and to give it over to Warren White, this next part. You're on mute. Paul, can we let uh, Laura know we can't hear her? Yeah, I did. I was I was telling her she was muted or okay. asking her to unmute. She's okay. unmuted now. Now she's muted again. So within the walls of Thomas, we fully promote equality for all. And the Green Club started a wall of speaking up so that a student can write positive notes on what changes in society we would like to make happen and how to enact, enact those changes. Walking past the wall between the North and South Cafe, you can see the color of the wall, the little clock, and the leaf by students who make the world a better place here at Thomas, we are also doing our part to help the people in Ukraine during these devastating times across the week. We are collecting items such as sleeping bags, toothbrushes, medical gloves, and all of the other necessities that you could possibly think of um, to provide humanitarian aid to the people in Ukraine. Thank you for listening, and we wish you a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you to our student liaisons. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you being here and sharing the updates with us. Sorry. Thanks so much. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you hear what Lauren said? Only at a, a very low volume. Okay, I, I have the rest of it here. I just asked her that we couldn't hear her. So, okay. Oh. Do you want me to repeat it? Okay. Within the walls of Thomas, we fully promote equality for all. Okay. The Dream Club started a wall of sticky notes where students can write positive notes on what changes in society we would like to see and how to make to, and how to enact those changes. Walking past the wall between the North and South 
cafe, you can see this colorful wall full of thoughts and beliefs of our students to make the world a better place for all people. Here at Thomas, we are doing our part to help the people of Ukraine during these devastating times across the East. We are collecting items such as sleeping bags, toothbrushes, and medical gloves to provide humanitarian aid to system of Ukraine. Thanks for listening and wish you a wonderful evening. Great job speaking up. That was great for jumping in. And Joan, if you'd like to jump in, we'd hear from you as well. Good luck. Okay, can everybody hear me? Good, good. Thank you, student liaisons. I love hearing your reports. And um, I get to check things off of our box that you share because I love the value you give to all of it. Um, hello, I am so glad to be back. And sorry, I missed you guys last month. Um, our 800 members, you guys know, I always start off with something on the safety note. And we started off this year trying to figure out if we go on remote, all our planning, how can we have these smooth transitions into our lessons to help that learning continue? And as we move through the five months, we never had to go remote, which was pretty cool. And now we're on that level of where we get to value, continue to value everyone's opinion in our buildings with masking and unmasking, having those conversations and being able to create those environments on a daily basis for all our students, all our staff, everybody in the building. We love to be able to model that respect. And not only do we model the respect in the hard things we need to navigate, but also in the fun. So on February 10th, we had our second annual flannel day. And the students were so cool too, because as much as the WTA, we want to connect, we show the how important that is to connect and stay together. The kids were so funny. They're like, are you sure you guys better win? You have to win. Who won? Which pictures? There were so much pictures and so much togetherness, although we were in 11 different buildings, that's, um, that Zach ended up making a photo album instead of just a collage or two. It was pretty cool. And I believe our winners were State Road and Willing. I will hear tomorrow if I give you, gave you misinformation. Our <laughs> Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, that continues and holds strong. They're looking forward, Candace Lucas, on going to the March 31st is their second workshop being held by BOCES. People are very much looking forward to it and continuing to hear. We have always prouded ourselves in making sure all are welcome. And we continue to work on that. The workshop is a really proactive step in making sure that we hear, we hear the research, we see the research and we're working together as a district. I know people across diff different bargaining units all attend that workshop on March 31st. Can't wait to hear about it more. Jen Hafey, again, Women's Committee being on the map. This month being Women's, His being Women's History Month and trailblazing people, she will probably be in the books one day. We are reaching out and collecting things for the Willow Domestic Violence Shelter. She'll be delivering some hygiene and some baby products. So we can do the help that we can do. We can help where we can help. And we will, uh, she has reached out to the shelters and we will be delivering those things. Uh, after the collections are all this week, we will be delivering those things this weekend and into next week. PTSA, oh, I'm so excited. Community Arts Day is gonna be in person. And that's gonna be, Brooke, I can't wait because all those sources of strength murals will be up over at Schrader as well. Um, it's gonna be fabulous. Although we have our different roles, we connect with the PTSA and we are encouraging our students, our juniors and seniors, to make sure their scholarship applications are in that time of year. WTA Cares, Dan Crowley, you guys know we collected over 400 co coats. We also collected over $4,000 for the Polar Plunge and Special Olympics. Very, very cool. Um, you know, I thought about when you were little, remember we used to play this game when something was hidden 
and people got closer and closer. It was like warm, you're warmer, you're colder, you're warmer. I feel like that's what we're playing. We're getting warmer and warmer. Senior trips, spring sports. Tonight, even though the power went out, we can go back to school and have that concert, have that robotics, the advisors, plays, school plays are going to be had. Um, the intramurals at the younger grades, the intramurals at the middle grades, they're all on the calendars and we are hopefully, hopefully going to be able to have them without any further weather or viruses. Our WTA mentors, Last month, I talked about when we are doing our book study. Our book study will be, um, our fourth book meeting is actually next week. But our WTA members also do a great deal of mentoring with interns, with hours that our college areas need for students, our student teachers. All these are pieces that needed to be had. And our WTA members, whether you're counselors or OTs or PTs, or mental health providers, whether it's internships or special ed or gen ed, we are there for our colleges. And we have spent, I'm collecting some data because I am interested to know how many of the colleges have come through with students this year to help have our future educators. It's very, very important as you guys all know. Um, our master teachers, just a little insight into April's report, we have four teachers in our Webster School District that have been invited not only to apply, but to be in the program of the master's teachers. And that is a great honor and a great privilege. And I will be sharing their names next month. I am going to end with our WTA 50 years as they have been, uh, Dina Malbouf and the gang have been celebrating in February and I had some I will be bringing some to our next meeting. Um, we, they gave chocolate kisses to every single WTA member throughout the district, had a little pink, thanks for giving your heart, filled with Hershey kisses, just walked in and they were all in our mailboxes. Um, it was great. It was like that coffee that was delivered that day, coffee and a cookie. We've got Hershey kisses. You guys know those little things just connect and make us and continue to help get us through all of this 2021, 22. Um, with that, I'm going to leave you guys. I, you know, I love reporting. I love reporting after student liaisons. I wish you all well, happiness and um, that extra to half a world away who is suffering. And we're navigating and helping kids answer some pretty hard questions, easing fears there too. Layers upon layers, but we will get there. So good night, everybody. I hope you have a safe drive home. Well, you are home. <laughs> Thank you, Joni. Thank you so much, Joan. We always appreciate Bye. hearing from you. Hope appreciate that you're well you. and safe and happy as well. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our liaison reports. Moving on to our public hearing. Um, Brian Freeman will walk us through a public hearing on the proposition of whether or not the Webster Central School District Board of Education should adopt a resolution providing for certain tax exemptions pursuant to section 466-K of the real property tax law. So with that, Brian. Uh, Tammy, I think first we need you to make a motion to open the public hearing and a second and a vote on it. Okay. Can we please have a motion to open a public hearing to hear the information regarding the proposition of section 466 of the real property tax law? So moved. Mm -hmm. Janet, um, I'm sorry, Janice, second by Shanna. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. I apologize, Brian. I didn't notice that. Uh, nope. It's, it's quite all right. The, it's a bulky resolution, and yeah. um, that might have gotten lost at the beginning. Um, okay. It's also it, the few times we've done public hearings for things like this. Um, I don't think we've had any participation. So um, 
there is no time frame to keep it open. Uh, I know we ran the hearing in the Herald last week. Um, so uh, we gave the appropriate amount of notice. And so I don't, Cindy, there was nobody signed up to speak or communicate on it. And I think we've heard from the volunteer associations and um, those Frank, groups. Frank, have you had so, anybody reach out to you through email at all? I, you know, I've had conversations back and forth with both uh, West Webster and Northeast, uh, probably dating back to January when we started getting some good information on what actually got passed and, and the rules and uh, regulations. So they've been pretty organized. Um, so there hasn't been like, oh, here's 50 emails. It's been very, you know, direct with the leaders of the organizations. Any emails since you published in the Herald from any of anyone concerned? Nothing. I uh, haven't heard anything. So she said nothing to my inbox, and I know Brian and I are pretty closely connected. So if somebody did, he'd, he'd send it my way to answer. Yep. So I'm I'm glad we were able to have the the information session, at least. Um, last week to be able to learn about it and understand a little bit more about the exemptions. So if there aren't any other questions or comments, I think we can entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. Okay, Maria, I, that's very appropriate that you make the motion um, to provide tax exemptions pursuant to section 466-K of the real property tax law for first responders. Can we have a second? Mike Alt, all in favor? Aye. Aye. One abstention only because my husband is a first responder and it's probably not appropriate for me to vote knowing it'll benefit my family. So I support it. I just should abstain at this time. Thank you, Janice. So that would be one abstention and motion carries. So can we have a motion then please to close the public hearing portion of the meeting to address this resolution? So moved. By Jen, second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. See everybody's hands. Motion carries. Moving on to the instructional reports portion of the evening. We have uh, Superintendent Neenan will lead. We have Mrs. Hendrickson. Congratulations. <laughs> I know it. It's very exciting. You're going to have to change your name on the screen, Jen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love it. And Mr. Benz and Mrs. Safe. So thank you so much for being here this evening. And, and we'll let Brian take it away from here. But we just had to say hello to Mrs. Hendrickson. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, I'm going to start out thank in you. one of the many reasons. I'll wait until Paul pulls it up there. There we go. One of the many reasons that I love the month of March is the fact that it's Music in Our Schools Month and a Youth Art Month. A terrific time to enjoy the talents of our student musicians and artists. A highlight this week is sure to be the Spry Drama Club's premiere of Matilda Jr. this Friday and Saturday. So we wish all of our Spry performers the best of luck and break a leg. Uh, be sure to check out our website, WebsterSchools.org, new story. Um, for show information, including ticket information. And while you're visiting our website, I'd encourage you to visit our calendar page for other concerts and art events to, to enjoy over the next couple of weeks during this um, month of, of March, uh, and certainly throughout the rest of the year as well. Uh, and speaking of the arts, this is exciting. And I am so thankful to our Webster Central PTSA for the return of Community Arts Day after a two year hiatus. This community wide celebration of the arts will be on Saturday, April 9th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is such a gem in our community and I'm so excited. And I know how much work goes into putting this on. And so I'm just so thankful for our, our friends over at PTSA. So hopefully everybody gets a chance to come and enjoy that. Next up is part of our campus news tradition now. I'm pleased to introduce 
three special guests. And yes, we'll start with Mrs. Hendrickson. Jen Hendrickson is our <laughs> principal at Plank South and representing our secondary schools tonight are Mr. Benz and Mrs. Safe. Uh, Mr. Benz is the principal at uh, Schrader High School and Mrs. Safe is our goal program administrator and they are going to take it from here and tell us a little bit about what's going on around our campus. Mrs. Hendrickson, I'll turn it over to you. I just got to keep saying it so that I, I get used to it. <laughs> you and me both. I was in a meeting the other day and I still introduced myself as Mrs. Sullivan. One of my teachers was like, no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> you're right. 2-22-22, that's when it happened. So it hasn't been that long. So cut me some slack. Um, thank you guys so much, though. I am so excited to be here. Getting to brag about what's happening in our schools is my favorite thing to do. I could literally talk for hours about the amazing teaching and learning that happens in all 11 buildings. Um, I promise I won't talk for hours tonight, but have some great little pictures and snippets for you to hear about um, everything that's been taking place since the last board meeting. So I'm going to share my screen with you if Paul has given me permission. He did. Thanks, Paul. All right. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Um, if you can't, please interrupt me by all means. So we had a lot going on since the last board meeting, starting with February 11th, which was the 100th day of school. It's always a very exciting time, especially in elementary world. We had kids building with 100 items and stacking 100 cups, stamping 100 stamps, counting 100 items, reading 100 words, show and tell of 100 objects. Um, they were making 100 day crowns and hats and glasses and dressing to depict the number 100. And let me tell you, there are some creative families out there. I am so glad my kids are past the 100th day of school because that was pressure to try to live up to all of the incredible things that people came up with. Um, we also ended Black History Month in the end of February. So throughout the month of February, students and teachers celebrated many contributions of African-American people and dug into our American history by researching Black inventors, listening to Black musicians, studying Black artists, reading books by Black authors, and admiring Black athletes. Here are some photos of just a few of the many activities that students throughout the district participated in as we celebrated Black History Month. This is a group of kindergartners. They were learning about inventors like Garrett Morgan, who invented the traffic light amongst other things. We had students learning about athletes and channeling their inner Olympians during PE classes. We were learning about authors and kids were being able to draw pictures to depict their uniqueness throughout the month. It was just really great to see all of the learning taking place. We move in February to March and it becomes Women's History Month. So we transitioned from Black History Month to Women's History Month and students throughout the district now are learning about important female icons throughout our history. They're learning about Michelle Obama and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Katherine Johnson, Helen Keller, so many amazing women that have broken down barriers and contributed endlessly to the world that we live in today. And these students are in a fourth grade classroom and they were researching different women that made contributions and advancements in the field of mathematics. It was pretty exciting to see them be pretty wowed during this activity. March Book Madness is taking over. Each of the elementary schools are doing a version of March Book Madness, many in March, some later in the school year because of the library construction. Um, but the books for the competition aren't the same in every building. What you see on the screen are being used in Plank South, Clum South, and DeWitt. And these particular books focus on all things positive. We all could use a little positivity in our lives. So there's themes of friendship and community and overcoming challenges. Um, so the kids are really excited to read these bo books and then they vote on them um, and get it down to the final two. And ultimately there becomes a winner, but all of the books are winners in our mind. The essential skills are alive and well in Webster schools. <laughs> Given everything that students have gone through over the last couple of years, these skills are more essential than ever. And there's a great progression across the grade levels that's incredible to watch. What you see related to one of the skills in UPK is very different from what you see that same skill looking like when they get to be fifth grade. So we put together a little video for you. Thank you so much to Paul Conley for helping with this. He's amazing at what he does. Um, to let you see the essential skills in action in our classrooms and to hear from some of our students.
we were talking with each other so then we can both um so then my partner and me can um, figure out what to do next if i needed help evelyn would help me and if she needed help i would help her and we worked together really well mm -hmm. we we like we like work together to show ourselves that we love each other and that we're working like together. Listening and talking. When my partners communicate with me, it helps me become a stronger writer. I have this sheet that has questions and, you know, critiques that will make the writings better while also still being kind, well communicating. Boys and girls, thank you for coming in so quickly and quietly and checking the board for what your task was to be. You had excellent time management. Very good. You can continue to keep rereading the text. So in our class, right now we're doing daily five, but first we have to do a must-do before we can wait. Like a must-do is like something that we have to do first before we do the things that we can do. There's a lot of ways we show self-management during the clothespin game. At this part where I'm hiding the clothespins, how do you have to control yourself? Self-management. By not, by not looking, so you know, don't know where it is. <laughs> Who's got it, everybody? use self-management by with 5-2 I divided whole numbers and I said I completely understand but I have more evidence so now I'm gonna say I can teach others and for 5-5 I got the division part right and but I just need to add on the remainder so I'm gonna put down I need more practice and example really be loud because there's like a classroom right there working. Yeah. Um, and we will be doing our work, like doing what we're supposed to be doing. Who had the clothespin? Kian! And first graders, how did you show, here Kian, come right over here. How did you show integrity? Because there's a lot of integrity in our clothespin game. Lila. You didn't peep. Oh, I love that because sometimes it can be easy to peep and we have to make sure we're not peeping. Well, when I first started, I wrote the notes in because I couldn't really, like, get the notes, but, like, now I can. And perseverance, like, I used to be at the um, bottom of the class, but now I'm, I'm kind of getting at the top. So... I actually learned English by myself. It, I just repeated what others were saying. We have certainly seen a whole bunch of resilience built up in our children over the last several years. And one of the things we really love to embrace at the elementary level is the idea of it's okay to make mistakes. And when we make a mistake, we become stronger and we bounce back and we get better. It's been unbelievable to watch students go through different situations or life experiences or challenges with their learning that has allowed them to gain a great deal of resilience. The kids did a really great job of expressing the different essential skills and hopefully you could kind of see that progression over the grade levels. Um, as teachers kind of dig deeper into helping students form and build those essential skills. That is all I have for you from elementary land tonight. If you guys have any questions for me, I am always happy to answer them. Um, but if not, thank you so much for the opportunity to brag a little bit about our youngest learners. <laughs> Jen, that was a really good presentation. I loved how you took the essential skills and, and showed all the different examples of that and put it in the kids' words. I thought that was really, really a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Oh, thanks, and I appreciate that. Well, selfishly, I'd rather listen to the kids. So I'm like, nobody wants to hear me. Let's listen to the kids. <laughs>
and yet you tied it in beautifully. Like it really tied in everything that they were saying. And, um, and it makes, sometimes I look at them and I'm like shocked at how, how well (laughs) they've learned these concepts at such a young age. And, And I can tell you, and Paul can attest to this. We did not prep one of those kids. They had no idea. Their teachers had said that it would be okay to come in and film their rooms. And mm-hmm. on the fly, we went in and, and, and plucked them and said, Hey, you're doing a great job with whatever you're doing right now. I want to come talk about it. And they talked about it. It was unbelievable. We had all the outtakes that didn't make the film were equally as wonderful too. So we appreciate all the kids. We know the little, some, some of them were a little nervous to do that, but they did a great job. That is great. I would even love to see that. Like that could be on our website for parent, you know, prospective parents who are looking at where to send their kids to school when you're picking your elementary schools. That would be like so helpful for parents to be able to see that and know what their kids are going to be learning. Great to know. I I appreciate that. Well, we can definitely use that any, any place. Mm -hmm. Maybe even when you do kindergarten orientation, that might be great to show. When you said that, I thought (laughs) the exact same thing. I thought, oh, this might be some little easier kindergarten kindergarten parents. Yeah. yeah, by the time they leave elementary school. That's great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Do you guys have any questions about anything that's going on at elementary land? All right, Paul, I know you had a great picture of a dog. Maybe the dog can top our little cute kiddos. I don't know. Pressure's on, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out that clothespin game. I, I I wouldn't do well with that. I'd be peeking all the time. <laughs> Please, yeah, Paul, if you want oh, to jump, jump in. in. Paul, yeah. Paul Conley. Yeah, you, I, uh, I think that was the handoff. That was a handoff. We're just waiting for the next Sorry. slide. And Becky and I are going to um, share the work here. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, Becky shared. Yeah. yeah. So where is it now? Paul, is it going to allow me? Because I'm Yes, not you'll seeing. be able to share. On the bottom, the green screen that says share screen. You're right, but my, it's not coming up what it, my, uh, what's on my screen. Oh, I could probably do it. Got to pull it down. All right, hold on. Can you see what I put up on the screen? Or no? Not yet because it's not showing what my, uh, what's on my lap or my. Okay. Give me a minute. I'll get mine up. No, oh, I think it just came up. Here you go. And. There you go. All right. Sorry about that. I even went through it with Paul to make sure I got it and I didn't have it, obviously. <laughs> so, um, So I'm gonna talk about the middle schools and um, goal. Um, And you might have to cut me off, obviously, when I talk about goal. And then Paul's gonna talk about uh, Schrader and Thomas. So um, just wanted to share what Jackie and and, uh, Jim Bear shared from Spry. Uh, They were very excited about Spirit Week and Flapjack and Flannel Day um, and all the participation by all the kids. Uh, for random acts of kindness and Valentine's Day, they had Valentine's and kindness notes that were sent in by parents and then put on the students' lockers. The students put kindness notes to the staff and the staff did kindness notes to their colleagues. So I thought that was great. And they were very excited that their PTSA group provided a treat for Spry staff on that day. And they wanted to make sure that um, a great thank you was uh, given to the PTSA. So that's the uh, report from Spry. I love the Valentines on the lockers. It's awesome. Uh, Brian Powers uh, wanted to share that they did a uh, presentation during lunches on digital citizenship with Officer Hurley and Officer Johnson, as well as their care um, difference makers uh, in February's I was demonstrating kindness and you see all the winners there of uh, that award. And then, like I said, cut me off, get the hook, whatever you need to do when I get to talking about goal. (laughs) But uh, for those uh, that might be watching the live stream, goal is the Webster Central Schools alternative program and it's housed in uh, Webster Schrader, but we take both uh, Schrader and Thomas 
students. So I jammed as much as I could onto one slide uh, about what we've been doing. Um, we've been really trying to make the best of the school year and um, trying some new things this year. And one of the things that we are trying, we are offering an elective in public speaking. And in that elective, they create their own morning show for goal. And so down at the bottom, you see um, Anthony and Alex uh, with, uh, they're the two of our anchors for the, the morning show. And I think the best part about the morning show is the outtakes. It's the, those are the funniest things. And they put them at the end of every uh, morning show that they do. And that's probably a lot more fun than some of just the information giving, but it's really brought a lot of our kids out of their shell and gave them the opportunity to do something that they might normally not have gotten a chance to do. Uh, one of the other new things that we're doing, um, and it's our STEAM Cafe. Our kids are learning to um, do craft coffee and homemade baked goods. Uh, so they are learning to do pour over coffee. And I think Mr. Benz has had some of the pour over coffee. It is really, really good. Okay. Okay. And they have to learn how much to grind. They have to measure it out. They have to know how much, what the temperature should be of the water. Uh, they have to know how long to let it seep. Um, uh, the, I'm going to be honest, and they'll be honest with you too. Their baked goods were a little overdone. They uh, <laughs> they, they overmixed, is what I learned. I, I'm not that great of a baker, but they overmixed their muffins, and they're a little tough, I guess. That was the the message I got. But the coffee is awesome. <laughs> so that is what we refer to as our entrepreneurship elective and goal. Um, so. Uh, uh, one of the things that goal kids love is PE, and it's probably counter what most people would think about an alternative program, and they will take part and ask to go to extra PE classes. They love bowling. They love to go to the pool, swim. They, the picture there is of them uh, canoeing, um, but they, they literally will ask to go to a PE class that they're not in because they like PE that much. And we're very thankful for Ms. Gatsby and Ms. Ernstrom who do our two goal uh, PE classes. And it's a testament to them that they are, you know, that the kids really enjoy going um, to PE. Um, we have a picture up at the top of our uh, holiday celebration. We have a fantastic TA. Um, Mrs. Viavatni, and she collected donations from the community and gave every goal kid, all 36 of them at that time, um, a huge drawstring bag full of gifts and gift cards and everybody in the community just pitched in and it was so wonderful. I mean, the, the notes that we got from parents, you know, they just couldn't believe all the things. And it really was all Miss Viavatni, Daniela Viavatni that did it. She is just awesome. Um, wanted to point out that we do uh, Students of the Week. Landon R is up there um, with his certificate, but many, many more, but that just happens to be the one that I found. And I did ask him to take the mask down, even though, because that was during masking time, <laughs> just for the picture. Um, and I just wanted to point out that we started out our 2022 um, by telling, we put what we were proud of up on the lockers and then we were setting goals and we've been set, learning how to set goals and really do smart goals for our kids, which has been a bit of a challenge, but it's been a great experience for them. Um, and so you see those up there. I'm kind of working off of Jen's essential skills. We actually have a class called Essential Skills and Goal that every ninth grader has to take. And it is uh, where they take uh, Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens and Webster's Essential Skills. They learn about their learning style and how to apply those things uh, to their learning and goal and all their classes. And Ellen St. Peter, our special education teacher, teaches it and she does a fantastic job. And the first lesson after the new year, you see up at the upper left, um, we learned how to read emotions by looking at people's facial expressions. We did it both masked and unmasked. So the, the kids were kind of, it was interesting, their perspective between what they thought the emotion was when they saw the, kid, the pictures masked and not masked and to kind of follow up on um, some of the DEI stuff that everybody's been doing. Ellen looked at the pictures she used and she decided that she was going to ask our kids 
So we had more diverse pictures than the ones that she had found when she created the activity. So for next year, she's going to do the activity, but she's going to have it be more diverse by including our kids um, that are in the ninth grade right now so that it reflects who we are, not just a, a you know an activity she found somewhere. Um, so, and you can see, we took a little break. We like to play in the snow, even though we're high schoolers. So we have that huge pile of snow from all the plows and you see the kids playing there. They, we've done it for the last few years and they just love playing out in the snow. And um, so lastly, wanted to take a look at our Twitter. So you can see for the second quarter, our honor roll, high honor roll and high honor roll with distinction students from goal. And it's a great number of them. And some of those students not only got that for their goal classes, but they take some mainstream classes and they got that there. Um, I wanted to point out Jordan W who got high honor roll with distinction. He is also one of the Urban League's black scholars and he is a goal senior. Um, and lastly, I just have to do a huge shout out to coach Dave Clare, who happens to also be our English teacher in goal, who had the best season, he said, of his career in terms of warrior track and at States with, with uh, the high jump Cameron C. And Paul will have that to talk a little bit more about getting um, first place in States along with a lot of other medalists, but he is a fantastic teacher. He's a fantastic coach. And we are so happy that we have him in goal. And I'm sure uh, Schrader is glad they have him as a, a coach um, for the Warrior track team, indoor, outdoor, cross country, whatever's track, Dave Clare is there for us. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to him. So I will then uh, move on to the next slide and turn it over to Paul. All right, All right. thank you, Becky. Appreciate it. So the first one is Thomas Titans. We're talking about Thomas here. Um, if you look at the, the upper left and upper right pictures, I want you to think about what grade those artists are in. Mm -hmm. Well, they are in ninth grade of Mr. Todd Sell's class. So that's the studio art por portraits and just the quality of work that they do. And it was basically on, they were asked to create a portrait of someone important in their lives. Um, but just see the ability there. Um, and in terms of Mrs. Safe, just got, we're going to kind of go clockwise here. Um, Mrs. Safe was talking about the track team, and um, Thomas has had a successful track season. Martin um, placed ninth, uh, I believe, and it was in the throw. And then Jack placed uh, sixth, and he was in the 55 meter hurdles. That's over in the left on the podium there. And their hockey team has still yet to place because they're still playing um, in there. So a lot of winter activities. Um, some of the shared activities that Thomas and Schrader both do, I'll talk about that right now. Um, we're preparing next fall to host the Rock the Change. Now we're hosting it as a district, but it's actually being um, set at St. John Fisher. Um, that's where in Monroe County, um, we bring in our dream, all the schools, we call it the Dream Club, different schools called different things, but we'll go and it's um, a diversity and equity and um, they have some great speakers come in and they give students ideas and uh, students across the county share their ideas and they bring them back to our schools to work together on. Uh, we also do, we also both do at both schools, um, do students of the month and staff of the month. Um, we do students of the week too, uh, but our staff of the month this time, we had two, we do two at Schrader. There's just so many. Um, so it's like my little double up. They decided to give, we have parking spots for them. So they decided to give it up and set off for auction. And their um, all donations, whether you win the parking spot or not, will be sent um, to benefit Ukraine. Um, on top of that, um, our students and will be um, bringing in some um, goods for um, families of, of the Ukraine. And um, we are an NL school at Schrader, um, English um, um, as a second language, so ESL. Um, and basically we have a, a, a handful, a good handful of students who are Ukrainian descent. And we do have a handful of students who are Russian descent. And actually there's a, a student who has a, a Russian parent and a Ukrainian parent. And so we've been working with them. So it's tough time to support them at the same time, see where they are, um, their social emotional state. And they've actually been great at a concert tomorrow night. Um, one of our Ukrainian students will be playing the Ukrainian national anthem. So we're going to look to record that and just to have that on there. So just again, students um, are very supportive um, of, of what's going on in terms of just being in the know 
Um, I think as, as teenagers, I think that's not always easy, but I'm very proud just that they're in the know of trying to figure out how it all plays out. Um, also with our Dream Club, before I get into the pictures, they um, hosted After School. Dream is our diversity club, Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, they had a good turnout for that. And they like to do that as an activity for Black History Month, even though it was done in March. But we, it was good. It worked out because of the way the February break was um, with that. So, all right, that was that. I want to show about the combine between Thomas and Schrader. All right, I'm going to go clockwise here. This is like a wow. We threw them all together. Um, at the top there, the last time the board met, we talked about this show, but uh, Chorus Line was presented the following weekend. Um, so it was a fantastic show. And I've never seen it before. I didn't realize how long they stay on stage for it. It was like the whole show. There's no intermission and there's only a few um, costume changes. So it was a great show. Well done once again. Going clockwise, about one o'clock. That's Cameron. What a star. Holy cow. So she just picked up High Jump uh, two months ago. And anyway, she now won the States and at, at, at Class A. Remarkable young lady. She's also uh, had six medals um, during the um, event. So when you get there, there's a lot of hurried things, a lot of different events happening, and you can just place in different things, and she'll do like they do relays and, and everything. So as mentioned, um, very strong showing by our track team. We had 12 student athletes go down to the state finals for Schrader. Um, and I think it must be the new track. So we haven't used it yet. It's got to be the new track. So um, the one right below um, Cameron is a picture of students staying around and Mr. Eckler getting some things situated. That's from our Winter Olympics. So of all days, we had the snow. The Thursday before February break, it melted. It was raining. So we did it indoors. I can't tell you. It was like in a long time, the amount of fun students had. Over 100 some students were there. They had, we had eight different teams. We won medals, all that thing. It was great to see them laughing and smiling. Uh, the black and white pictures, they, uh, they shouldn't really be black and white because they, they should be celebrating their seasons on the bottom. That's our dual um, sectional final um, participants, boys and girls basketball teams. What a day event this past Saturday was. Boys played first, unfortunately they lost. Girls played next, unfortunately they lost. But you know what, their seasons were remarkable. There were three seeds in both um, tournaments. Um, they had an upset to, to get there, so... It was fantastic to see that and the school spirit around them. We did a warrior walk um, for them um, where we um, took off like five minutes off a couple periods and we had the teams, our sectional wrestler champs and our ski champ and our wrestling uh, sorry, with that. Um, we walked them through the hallways, a little parade through there. And it was a great way to end the Friday. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of happiness, a lot of smiles because there's optional masking you could see, and it was fantastic. And in the middle there at the bottom of six o'clock, there is a sophomore who scored a thousand points. Usually it's like a senior that does that. So Mariah is one heck of a, a basketball player and her teammates are also proud of her. She scored a thousand points in that game on Saturday as a sophomore. So lots of great things coming. All right, upper about, uh, what, what was that, about seven o'clock? That is our World Language Honor Society that I believe was mentioned before uh, by Brooke. Um, and there's our, and about 11 o'clock is our um, 12 or, uh, competitors for the uh, states and, and um, track. So just, the, there's almost too much going on sometimes. I mean, we had, it was just, you know, academics. You heard Michael talk about, I mean, um, Brooke talk about speech and debate. Now we have seven national, uh, students going to nationals. Um, Michael comp competes in that too, masterminds. Just a lot of great things. So it's academic, athletics, and sources of strength, a lot of mental health supports too. That's it for me in a nutshell. All right. Thank you very much, Becky and Paul and Jen. That was fantastic. I also want to put a shout out to our first responders and our police department. So when any of our uh, teams have won either a sectionals or like marching band when they won states, um, we have such an amazing community that our community brings them in to a, to a police and fire escort. And I am telling you, when you see the excitement and the joy, not only on the kids, but on the families, when that happens, it's like, you, I get chills just thinking about it right now. So a big shout out for all that. And I know how much effort and time it, it takes to, to coordinate that. So again, some, hopefully we'll have a few more of those coming up down the road too. So, we had them plan. We had them plan for Saturday, but I know. we just couldn't use them. <laughs> I know. So, and we will. We will. We'll definitely use them again, for sure. 
All right, so look, I've just got a couple last little pieces here and then I'll end my campus news. Uh, upcoming, we have the ELA and math exams for our students in grades three through eight. And actually this morning I heard from the commissioner and the commissioner did say that we are gonna have um, the ELA three through eight, math three through eight and Regents exams are a go this year. Uh, so that's hot, fresh off the press. And the ELA is on Tuesday, March 29th and Wednesday, March 30th. Math is on Tuesday, April 26th and Wednesday, April 27th. Um, and also some other important dates. We have uh, a schedule reminder for our elementary families. Parent-teacher conferences are this Thursday, March 10th, and Friday, March 11th, and also next Thursday, March 17th, and Friday, March 18th, which again, the reason I mention this is this means that it's a half a day schedule for our UPK to five students on these days. For our 612 students, you have a full normal full uh, schedule. And again, just elementary families, please keep your eye out for um, your, your child's school newsletter for information on bus schedules um, for conference days. And the last thing I'm going to do is just do a quick, quick plug for our HR department here and remind our community members that our district is actively recruiting for positions on our One Webster team for this coming school, or for certainly for this school year, but for this coming school year, 2022 23 and even for summer school. Uh, and in fact, our human resources staff will be hitting the road this week to participate in job fairs throughout the community, the first of which is at Nazareth College on Wednesday. And I would encourage anyone that is interested to please visit our Webster CSDjobs.org uh, to check out the job descriptions that uh, you might be able to apply for. And thanks for in advance for considering that. And with that, that ends my our, our campus news this evening. Does anybody have any questions or comments I'd like to share? Thank you so much. It was a lot, right? A lot of positive energy, a lot of positive achievements. Just wait till they use the new, the new track, right? Get outside and, and um, great to see smiling faces and kids engaged in so many things at so many different levels. So thanks for sharing that report. Yeah. It's the best part of the meetings now is the reports. Campus yeah. news. And Rebecca, I just wanted to say one note. It's it was ironic that you gave this presentation tonight because this weekend I was doing some local shopping in Webster and I went into one of the stores, Lala, and she had some posters up for the different like musicals coming up. And I just thanked her. I was like, oh, it's so great that you have these up. Or, you know, it's so nice for the community to see these up. And then she mentioned this goal for the holidays and putting together these gift bags and that you guys had come to them and how much she loved it and how much she wanted to do it again the next year. And I didn't know that that had taken place. So it was so nice to hear from our community, how much they loved participating in that and talking to her about goal, because, you know, sometimes you worry that goal is gonna be left out of some of these, you know, fun things. And so to make it extra special for them, I really appreciate it. Yeah, they, Lala was so generous. I mean, incredibly, <laughs> incredibly generous with us. We, you know, going out and, and putting it out there, you don't have expectations, you know, and it just, they really gave every kid something. It, it was a gift bag, every, a personalized card, a Christmas card in the bag, plus these cute little gifts and toothbrushes, which I always appreciate, you know, something that's useful to them all. But they were, and they, they are so complimentary of the program when they talk about it. It's, it's, it's great to have that kind of support in our community for the gold program. So thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate it. Excellent. Once again, thank you all. Thank you for being here and sharing your, your time with us this evening. We appreciate seeing you. Hope to see you in person soon. Okay, moving on to the January 2022 Treasurer's Report, uh, which everyone's had a chance to review. Uh, Brian, did you want to share anything specific about it? Yeah, on the revenue side, I just want to point out, if you notice, um, we, find, we got our star reimbursement in the month of January. Um, it's something I always pay attention to. Um, every single year, it keeps getting less and less as more and more people get the rebate checks. So I just wanted to point that out, that um, STAR becomes smaller because it's become it's coming off of people's bills and they're getting the rebate check. So it gets state uh, changes where the pot of money comes from for that. So just wanted to point that out um, and just let you guys know, we are working with a banking solutions company that has an algorithm. 
um, to look for the best banking rates currently. Um, we started that off in the month of January to try to drum up some better interest rates, um, all within New York State, but just a company that we're going to be working with um, to try to improve that for us. Okay, excellent. Um, any questions? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please, to pass the January Treasurer's Report? So Maria, second by Janice. All in favor? Thank Aye. you. Okay, moving on to the resolution to establish the hours of the annual district meeting on Tuesday, May 17th. Yep, no changes uh, to the normal hours that we do, six to nine uh, over at Trader uh, in the gym. Uh, so this is just the standard resolution to adopt those hours um, to be published. Okay, can we have a motion, please? A motion. And second by Mike, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. thank you. Motion carries. And then along those lines, the motion to approve the legal notice for the annual election also on Tuesday, May 17th. Yeah, but the big uh, item here is just know uh, the dates we will be publishing the four times before the uh, budget vote that it has to go out. Okay. And can we have a motion, please, to accept the legal notice? By Jen, second by Janice. All in favor? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And moving on to the calendar, draft calendar for 2223. Yep. And I'll start. Paul, well, I think you're going to bring it up on the screen. I think. Uh, it's Are a pretty you? straightforward year. Okay. Uh, and I'll start and then I'll ask Dave uh, Swinson to just chime in and add anything that I might miss. But I think the, the things to point out would be, oh, there we go, um, in that we'll have two superintendent conference days before Labor Day, <clears throat> and that the first day with kids will actually be on Tuesday. That's one of the things that everyone likes to know is, are we starting on Tuesday or are we starting on Wednesday? So we'll be starting with kids on Tuesday, um, the 6th of, uh, of September. And then there's one week um, and one day, if you will, for the December break. Um, and then you can see when the February break is, it kind of lines up a little bit with this year. We have our conferences for elementary in October and in, and in March. And then at uh, the last day of school, you know, it's in late June there, 20, 23rd is the last day for our staff. So Dave, anything else that you wanted to add from that? No, that's good. I will point this out. It does not align with a few other counties, which will be interesting. So for whatever reason, they don't, it's not something that's set by the state, but we always align with our BOCES. And so our county will be, but it doesn't mean that it's always aligned with everything in the state. So that's always a point of clarification if some families have actually contacted us about vacationing with um, family members and they're trying to figure out their family, their vacations, specifically in, in April. And they've got some that are out of town and or their kids in other parts of the state might be out a different week. So I always like to clarify that April break is a definitely not, it's, it's area specific. Okay. This is the first read. We'll do the second read next Tuesday. So can we have a motion to approve the first read? Are we allowed to ask questions? Oh, certainly. Uh, um, yep. Um, could you just kind of give me the background? Because I've spoken to a few parents of, el of elementary school students, and they're wondering because um, the Thursdays and Fridays, two weeks in a row, it's, is it can be challenging for childcare on those days if you're regularly in school and then you're not. Um, is this is it always been this way, or is there a chance that it could be adjusted to kind of reduce that time, maybe, or is that a contractual thing? I'll I'm gonna so I'll, I'll answer your first question. Okay. Yes, this is how we've been doing it now. I think for at least five years. Uh, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe even a little bit longer, mm -hmm. six, seven years, since we've been having them in October. This is the format that we've done. Uh, one of the things that we, we do is we have them for the half days so that we can, if you if we were to have them on two full days, we couldn't get state aid and we'd be, it'd be, it would, we'd run up against snow days. So that would be a problem if we didn't do the half days the way we do, do them, the, the way we're doing them now. 
Um, whether we're talking about moving them off of Thursdays and Fridays, I'll defer over to Aaron, but I don't believe we've really mentioned that. Yeah, I, I think it's just the half day because I know it's, they said it's just hard to find mm. care for that half a day because if you're regularly in school, you don't have daycare you know, provided. So it's mm -hmm. just a question of in the future, is it something maybe we could think about? So. We were at one point started out with three, but now it's four partly that is that is a contractual piece that we had to go to four in order to accommodate, you know, uh, enough conferences during those times. Okay, thank you. So, yep. Okay, All right. anyone else have any questions? Okay, then can we have a motion please to move uh, approve with the first reading and move it forward for a second reading at our next meeting. I'll move. Dennis and Jen, I'm sorry, you're the only two I can see. All in favor? Aye. There we go. All right, thank you. Moving on to board reports, our school liaison reports. So our, our screens may all look different. Um, so who would like to, Janice, do you want to begin? Do you have any I don't think I have an report? update for Clum South yet. We meet next month. We meet next Wednesday. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. I was like, I might could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of overlap. Um, Jen, did you have anything to share? Sure. Um, so I attended state road, uh, basically right now we're all PTSA buildings. We're just thrilled that we can go back to kind of as normal as we were before. Um, I know, uh, state roads getting ready to do a, a St. Patrick's day treasure hunt. Um, they're looking at doing some more fundraisers and they're really just looking forward to actually being able to have a school dance and, you know, provide food to families. Um, they're looking at possibly doing um, more fifth grade events, getting the sea breeze up and running again. So the optional masking, the being able to be back in the buildings, this is just kind of like when we got that approval from the P from central PTSA on Thursday, it was like, all right, go. <laughs> so it was just really exciting. So between Clem South and state road, Everybody's just like, yes, we can finally get our kids back in our buildings and our families back together. So I think that's what we're most excited about. Um, their next meeting is actually on Monday the 14th. So I'll, I'll report back after that. Excellent. Thank you. Shanna, do you have anything to share? No, Clem North, they, we, I, they haven't met either school. So Clem North's next meeting is March 24th and Willings is, is March 10th, this Thursday. Okay. Um, and Mike? Plank North next meeting is the 21st. Yeah, I know. No report. Not quite as consistent as we used to be. Maria, do you have anything? Sorry. Yep. At DeWitt, they're going to be holding their field day this year towards the end of the school year. Um, the date has not yet been determined, but families that are interested in helping can contact the school. Uh, our next meeting is on Monday the 14th at 6 p.m., which is virtual. At Thomas, just want to put a little plug out there for the Thomas Webster, uh, for the Webster Thomas players. They're presenting Little Shop of Horrors on April uh, 7th through 9th, to, and you can check the Thomas <clears throat> website for details. Willink, they're having their spring spirit wear sale coming up soon. Check the Willink website for that. Their next meeting is on this Thursday, as Shanna said. And um, that's it for schools. Okay, great. Now Schlegel has a meeting next Tuesday and Thomas um, is just sharing an upcoming date. May 16th, they're conducting a job fair and they've done a fair amount of publicity already in terms of reaching out to area businesses and contractors and um, trying to solicit participation and already have a host of people who are excited and, and, and wanna participate. So that'll be Monday, May 16th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and lots of information to follow on that. Um, so I, I'm not sure if Plank South meeting aligns to have a report or not, but we can hear from Linda next week for Plank South. So. Moving on to Monroe County School Board Association um, Steering Committee. We've talked a lot about uh, meetings across the county and Act for Education in terms of their role in promoting um, public education as a whole and the role public education plays in our society. So we're trying to promote 
that website and visiting that website and all the good that happens in Monroe County schools. So a, a small bit of what we saw tonight um, in our school happens across the entire county. So it's, it's an organization that receives a lot of support and does a lot of PR work through CauseWave to promote public education. Um, so they've, they put in a lot of effort to that. The next steering committee meeting is March 30th. Um, and so moving on to legislative committees, Jen and or Shanna, if you have anything to share there. I can go ahead. Um, I hope, I hope I, let, me, let me know if my connections is not good. Um, so at our legislative uh, meeting, we, they talked about the legislative breakfast, just kind of did a, looked back on it. Um, and some of the comments that came out of it, you know, some of the legislators couldn't be there. Um, so they attended remotely or they sent someone in their place. And so even though they were remote, they felt like that was good because they were still able to have discussions with some of the legislators, even though they couldn't be there in person. Um, the only thing it was difficult to hear because of the acoustics in the room. So they may consider spreading out more in the space that they have or possibly doing breakout rooms next year. There are three bills that passed the Senate and are now in the, are still waiting for assembly committee that will affect our schools. Um, there's one, the first bill that requires guidelines on grow your own initiatives to encourage school districts, um, BOCES and institutions of higher education to develop partnerships to attract underrepresented candidates into the teaching profession. So all three of these revolve around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, Senate Bill S-342 establishes that, that underrepresent teachers of tomorrow teacher recruitment and retention plan. So it's a plan for recruitment and retention. It uh, establishes the underrepresented teachers of tomorrow teacher recruitment um, towards attracting and retaining underrepresented teachers in underrepresented schools. And then there's Senate Bill S-7642, which relates to directing the commissioner to convene statewide and regional conventions to bring together underrepresented educators. Um, the idea is that they would discuss experiences, best practices, and provide for mentorship and networking opportunities. Um, so those three things have passed the Senate and they're now with uh, Assembly Committee and expected to pass there as well. We talked about electric buses. Um, and the need to advocate for longer timelines. So not only there are concerns about the fact that buses are, electric buses are two times the cost of a regular bus, there's delivery issues. And then there's also concerns about buses recharging in the middle of the route and whether our power grid can handle the toll that electric buses would bring um, without massive upgrades right now. Um, and then um, there is another concern about a bill that was passed. Um, it passed both the Senate and the assembly it's S2122A and it relates to um, lead testing and lead levels in water. So it eliminates certain exemptions and it sends more minimum standards. And right now the, the lead level that they requirement that they've lowered it to is actually lower than what we get from our Monroe County water. So our water comes in from Monroe County and it would fail those requirements right now, which would make it look like schools are gonna to need to be filtering water. So there's definitely some concern around that bill and what we're gonna to have to do to be able to meet those new lead levels. And then the last thing that they talked about was um, candidate nights coming up for the election. Um, the school board discussed the importance of, of candidate nights, which allows community members to hear candidates answer their questions. And um, they so they suggested working with PTSAs, just like they normally do to gather their questions. But Monroe County School Boards can facilitate uh, meet the candidate night. Um, and so they've been, and they did that last year with Penfield and some other districts so that people can actually see, um, you know, and hear from, from people that are working, you know, looking to become board members. And that that would be helpful because then you can actually see how some respond to some other questions. The next meeting is April 6th, first Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Um, labor relations. Uh, this, Maria, the meeting that we had was a presentation on the New York marijuana use law and what it means for schools. There were, there was a lot of different information, um, shared too much to, to put down here, but, um, that was the presentation for that. 
Thank you. Information exchange was about, um, there's a presentation by Rochester Museum and Science Center about the upcoming solar eclipse, which is April 8th, 2024. And that sounds like a long way away, but what they're talking about in terms of infrastructure and traffic, because we're in the path, um, they estimate right now that it could be around 375,000 people traveling to Rochester in this area because we are in the path. And then also it's at 3.30 is the estimated time. So the, the planning around activities for, for kids and making sure that kids are accounted for and not on school buses um, is beginning now because it will be such a vast effort. So once again, we're grateful and, and um, glad to be hey. part of all the planning that goes on within Monroe County because it's such a fabulous network across the entire county in terms of planning and resources and making sure everybody has glasses and posters and they can customize their own activities. And so there'll be a lot to share about that over, over time, but it, it's exciting. And executive committee, um, there's an upcoming meeting for that. So uh, Brian and I attend that. Moving on to standard, standing district committees. Audit committee, I don't know that there's anything to report there. Uh, we're undergoing our internal audit now. We'll have uh, a committee meeting when that is done. Probably be in no. end, end of April, beginning of May. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. And policy. I don't know if Janice and or Brian together want to update some good news in the, in the, in the wings, right? Yeah. The good news is we received our relatively large. There it is. Oh, oh my gosh. You weren't kidding. Okay. <laughs> I prefer paper and it kills me because that's a lot, but Brian assured me it was already printed. So I'm not killing any extra trees, um, but we have to go through that now. So that will be my homework for the next several weeks along with Linda and Maria. And then we'll start to meet and really dive into it. But that is what we're going to be looking at in the near future. <laughs> Excellent and good luck. Thanks. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what kind of, what kind of changes. Erie One BOCES handles the, the policy we know for you know, the majority of, of school districts across the state. So it will be really interesting to see how Webster's history around policy making aligns with this. So looking forward yes, to, definitely. to learning along with you. Um, and strategic planning. I can uh, add a few things, Tammy. Um, we do. actually have our next meeting this Thursday, but the team has been working on the survey questions in I won't reveal the results yet till we meet on Thursday, but we are adding a couple around communications, which if one thing we learned over the last couple of years, communication is so important in how people can get the information they need by going to our website, it's easy to navigate. So questions are around that. And then there's also a new one around mental health, which just the stress that people have been under due to COVID uh, and the resources that we put in place to bolster our mental health support, hopefully. Uh, is something we want people to evaluate during the survey. And then we're removing a couple on uh, some areas that we think were confusing or weren't helpful when we got the results. And then so also the- By Thursday. Right, and then also the questions that we um, sort of altered and tweaked around diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Right. Well, with yeah. Colleen's advice and and, so the DEI committee has had some input into that, which has been really informative and, and helpful to um, the longitudinal look that the strategic committee and planning efforts provide it goes, it goes so far, it goes so long in terms of how it influences everything uh, that the board does and that how we refine and look at our goals and then Give it back to the superintendent to implement. Um, okay, thank you. That's standing committees. Moving on to the school community committees. Uh, when report, Maria, do you have something on behalf of you and Linda? Uh, well, we have a meeting tomorrow at noon, um, but we are continuing to work towards connecting and partnering with local businesses 
so that we have one vision, one voice about keep helping our kids grow up strong and substance free in our community. Excellent, thank you. Um, and there is no fire report to share this evening and PTSA, Janice, if you wanna talk about the central PTSA meeting. Yeah, like Jen said, the, the big announcement was that families can get back in the building. So that was, that was met with a lot of um, positive reception and a lot of pen writing and planning um, that I know was a long time coming. So that was a big thing, but we also visited the emergency center on Jackson Road, which was really neat. Uh, we learned a lot about what they do and the amount of calls that they take um, and the fact that they literally are not funded in the least bit. So um, that was an interesting conversation. They asked me on the spot to our budget numbers. And thankfully, Brian gave such a great presentation two days earlier. I had that $89 million right on the tip of my tongue. And I answered and whew, thank God, because everyone looked at me in the minute he asked that question. Um, but a lot of positive things going. They're talking a lot about the seniors and the different events they want to plan for them this year. I think the lighting walk was a huge one that they want to do again. The illuminary um, walk. Yep. Thank you. I knew I was going to screw up the name. Thank you. Um, but it was just so positive now that things are opening up and the year is coming to a close. Spring is on the horizon. Um, Jen, am I forgetting something else? Um, actually, yeah, the um, there's also going to be like think kind of thing on when there's going to be a big uh, collaboration between when and the um, the CAD day as well. So just a lot of community collaboration to really get people back out into our community and really build those ties between community organizations, PTSA, and also the school district. So now that we can actually be and together, again looking for yes, and again looking for volunteers. Community Arts Day is a huge undertaking. Um, we obviously had food restrictions for a long time, so the cafeteria will not be open, even though things are opening up because it's just kind of too late to plan that. But they are looking for someone if they have food truck connections um, that maybe we can get that going. So if anybody here or anybody listening has some food truck connections and can help them out, that would be much appreciated so that we do have some sort of food option throughout the day. Okay, and they could share that with Central PTSA or a PTSA connection that could share that. Okay. Yes, anyone can get them connected. Yep. Yep. And our consent agenda. Um, everyone's had a chance to review the items on the consent agenda. Can we have a motion to pass that, please? So moved. Janice, second by Maria. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. And moving on to visitor speaking time, where we have this evening three um, community members wishing to address the board. And we have, you can see uh, where Paul Conley's would be is the counter and what we have, what we will ask this evening is people wishing to speak um, at four o'clock will be notified that their time is up and by 415 their time will be ended. So with that, I will briefly read once again, the visitors speaking time policy on behalf of the school district. The board invites the public to comment on matters regarding the school district. Taxpayers, citizen school personnel may openly express themselves directly to the board. The public comment section of the meeting is a time for the Board of Education to listen. Board meetings are held in public and are the sole opportunity to conduct the business of the district. Meetings are not an opportunity to engage in dialogue and are not public forums. Persons wishing to address the board would have requested a link with the district clerk by noon of the meeting day. Speakers should limit comments to three to four minutes. Persons wishing should be recognized, identify themselves, and the agenda topic they wish to discuss. Public speaking time will occur and at the conclusion of the meeting and extend no longer than 40 minutes. It is imperative that speakers address the board in a civil manner, refrain from discussing specific personnel or students, limit outbursts and limit unnecessary noise. 
Comments naming specific personnel should be addressed privately or in writing to the board in order to protect individuals' rights. Matters that would infringe upon student privacy will not be addressed in this public forum. The board encourages an atmosphere of respect and tolerance and strict adherence to the district's code of conduct. Should persons act in a manner inconsistent with district protocols, they may lose the privilege of the floor. Often students are in attendance and expectations for positive behavior are clear for all. The board would like to encourage speakers to continue conversations through other means, including phone calls, follow-up meetings with a district administrator to further address any questions or concerns. The board encourages parents and community members to become involved and informed, utilizing the proper channels of communications to do so. Because school boards do not manage the daily operation of the district, we encourage you to seek clarity on specific issues or questions by reaching out to your child's teacher or building administrator. The board recognizes public education may include controversial issues. However, the board believes challenging issues can be addressed in a civil manner while promoting respect and tolerance for all. We encourage the positive engagement of all stakeholders. Having said that, Cindy or Paul, can we welcome the first speaker, please? And we have Lewis Levine first. Thank you. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for the opportunity to comment to the board. This board has on multiple occasions cloaked itself in self-adulation for its transparency and accountability to the Webster families. But now it has cloaked itself in invisibility. On February 28th, the board announced that due to an incident at the previous regular meeting, it would conduct meetings virtually for the immediate future for the safety and security for all in attendance. Under what authority did the board make this decision to conduct virtual meetings? Was it under the governor's amendment one to the open meetings law to allow virtual meetings in response to a state of emergency disaster due to the coronavirus? I think not since the board specifically stated the reason for remote meetings was due to an incident at the last meeting. And at what public meeting did the board make this decision or was the decision made in private away from public input? If anything, it's the public that needs to be protected from the board security personnel. Rather than have open discourse during an in-person environment, which provides a unique intimate connection and empathy that cannot be replicated via video, the board simply doesn't want to engage with Webster families, the taxpayers, and those concerns with the state of education in our community. The so-called safety and security issue was self-created. Instead of leading by example and the board stopping the meeting to prevent the unnecessary manhandling of a parent, the board allowed its own employee to make physical contact with a parent when more civil and nonviolent means could have been employed. Isn't settling a peaceful act, peaceful act of disobedience through non-physical means what we should expect and what we would want to teach to our children? The board's own code of conduct specifically prohibits the violent behavior that the board allowed to unfold between their, staff, their own staff member and a parent. These actions are unbecoming a school board and puts on full display that when the going gets tough, it's better to hide and cower. Isn't the time the board, isn't it, this the time the board should be showing courage and demonstrating for all, including the student body, that it is better to face issues head on and have trust and confidence in the community level processes that are the hallmark of our American way of life and to hold in-person meetings. It's this type of behavior that demonstrates how the board and administration are incapable of instilling the values in our children that will make them uniquely equipped to meet and overcome the difficult and never ending challenges that confront a free and democratic people. We are now seeing on the world stage what happens when weakness and timidity are allowed to spread unfettered through society. It is horrific enough that a curriculum that sparks gender and race division, as well as loathing for oneself and country, has already begun seeping into the hallways of our community schools. But to see the board and administration demonstrate its own divisive tendencies by holding only virtual meetings is abhorrent. You can hide from the public, but you will not be able to hide from the ballot box. Thank you. Next, Thank we you. have Kevin Lockhart. Hello. Sorry, check my, oh, the timer's going. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, as a state, as a country, as a county, 
and as a town, we're utterly lacking in leadership. What is resistance without hardship? Or what's hardship without resistance? It's just losing. So I'm going to take a moment to tell you all about a little background of Webster. I don't know who knows this, but in 1948, the commissioner of education in New York State and the voters created Webster Central School District. The powers were delegated directly and indirectly to the Board of Education from the legislature, not the governor, the legislature. It was only 13 years later in 1961 that a young man by the name of James became a student at Webster Central and led the Section 5 track baseball and basketball teams to undefeated state championships before going to college in Syracuse. The coach called him an inspirational leader. After college, James flew helicopters in Vietnam. I'll remind you, this is a student from Webster. He flew helicopters in Vietnam and then became a major in the Air Force flying Phantom fighter jets. In 1981, Major James Cripps jet suffered equipment failure in the South China Sea near the Philippines and he died tragically. But Major Cripps showed us all 50, 60, 70 years later how important it is to exemplify courage and leadership and how to take ordinary people and inspire champions. And our society is desperately lacking in that leadership that James, Major James Cripps exemplified. The USA ha just has no leadership. The county has no leadership. Nobody came out and, and said the obvious about the experimental quote unquote vaccines and what they're doing to the kids. And there's no discussion about this. Now, more than ever, we need people who will stand on the side of humanity and inspire hope. The path to this weak state that we're in, where we're paying 440 a gallon, we all contributed to this by failing to pick up and take responsibility and ownership for as much as we possibly could ourselves. I trust that you all received my notice of complaint today in your inboxes. I filed a complaint against all the board members and against some of the other people, the superintendents. Um, please take that seriously because um, the oaths of office, your fidelity agreements, they're gonna be leveraged and we're gonna have justice and we're gonna have, we're gonna become uh, a symbol of strength again, so that the memory of James Cripps can live on. That's pretty much it. And we really need to get back to the in-person meetings. This really is, I mean, you have to take ownership for the controversy that you caused. Thank you. Thank you. David Ruiz. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, you we can. can. Hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. okay, sorry. Let me uh, okay. get to my room here. So, anyways, good evening, everybody. Uh, I feel like I'm in uh, doing penance here with this Zoom for our uh, hitting it pretty hard uh, the last meeting. I do feel it is a little bit of a political retaliation, but I understand that's the game. So uh, it's unfortunate, but so uh, I did want to clarify something on the uh, the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, it because they kind of read that I'm against the vaccines, and uh, Cindy does a great job with really filling in a lot of what we do say. But and that I want to correct that I'm against the mandates, not the vaccines. However, I do agree with the one jokester who says, you know, I'll take the vaccine when they come up with one. 
Um, but at any rate, I'm against the vaccine mandates for the schools. Yeah, I believe that there's some people, leaderships in downstate already trying to get uh, mandated for kids next year, K through 12, have to be vaccinated. I'm hoping it doesn't come to fruition. However, I feel that uh, this board and its leadership uh, may too easily comply with such a mandate. I don't know. I pray not, but that's a big concern. So for, I'm against the mandate. Secondly, I did voice concerns over, over the freedom of information requests that are just continually denied uh, under this uh, current uh, board leadership again. Um, and, uh, and again, the word freedom is in there <laughs> and it's being, being stepped upon, just like the previous fellow said beforehand. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I'm sorry to see it in our district. Uh, thirdly, the minutes also uh, seem to be uh, probably in the minutes. You should not have had anything to do with last week, last month's altercation. From what I understand, it's under litigation. So, uh, but to me, I, I, it's already been spoken about. So I guess it's okay. But you, but but what you stated was that it says Tammy Gorowski requested the audience to respect the student's right to speak after disruption. It's misleading. The students did, the, the, the people in the audience had no problems with the students. In fact, some in the audience said to, the, to your security guard, please wait until the students are done. Okay, so we're concerned. But I know politically you're trying to sham it on us. I think that's wrong. I don't know how who told Cindy to put that in. That's wrong. Now, again, I wasn't there, but I'm just saying, man, and already people on social media are saying how terrible of parents to step on children who are trying to speak. That's not what happened. The disruption came about by something you instigated and was a timely fit. Why did they do it right when the speakers, the, the children were speaking? You know, so let's be clear about that. It's unfortunate you put that in the minutes. You want to use that and make hay, go ahead, but it's, I think it's disingenuous. Let for the record say that the parents loved the students and we respected them, and it, but was out of our hands. Uh, that, that it was really uh, the, the play, uh, it was really the, the uh, district employees that, uh, disrupt, that, that caused the disruption at that time. So, uh, so uh, again, uh, at any rate, so I have the um, vaccine mandates, the, the caution there, the freedom of information requests, and the minutes here. Uh, again, it, it, I, I'm putting the pressure on the entire board, but under the leadership also, and it's a matter of public record, Tammy, that you're the board president. I understand you're up for re-election, and, and on the board, the district also says Maria Regilio's under um, the re-election and Linda Diogardi, if they decide to run, uh, I'm saying that for a reason because, you know, I, I, I want to love you guys and blessings on how you serve us and trying to serve us and our children. But some of these things and, and, and uh, very important to me and many others and elections do have consequences. So um, those are my concerns. And, and I hope next week or next meeting we can stop with the pendants and go to regular meetings and hopefully the, uh, the, the, the uh, legislature do, doesn't renew the mandates uh, that are that are due to expire March 16th, which, which disallow such meetings. But but I understand. So, um, again, those are my concerns. And uh, thank you for this time and uh, have a good night. Thank you, sir. OK, with that, can I please have a motion to adjourn? the meeting and move into the workshop. So moved. Janice and a second. Maria, all in favor? Aye. Thank you.